Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's most talented stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Tina Arena, how are you? Hello, Alex. I'm really well. What about you? You are gorgeous. I'm delicious. This is a marriage made in heaven. (laughs) This is a marriage made in heaven. Good. (laughs) I think so. Listen, I was in my car the other day and I put your new album on, which is called Reset. And there it is from track one through 13, just doing the business. Congratulations. And you didn't press skip. No. I didn't and that's a good test because you know in a car your brain goes into auto and if you get bored you find yourself pressing that next button absolutely and I'm very very happy to know that you didn't press forward and that you would let it play you've got a great sound that's the thing about you A you can sing which is so rare Um, you've got an amazing tone about you and it's so natural and beautiful I presume you can't be trained to sing like that no I think the thing that ultimately trains you is life and the experiences that come with it Your choices, the good ones, the bad ones, and the mediocre ones, it's all of that. Mm. It's all of that kind of colourful stuff that that creates a timbre. You know, when I look at your CV, it is extraordinary. I've interviewed a lot of people over the years. I don't think I've ever met another artist who's got such a colourful CV um, and such an acclaimed CV. You've been given virtually every award around the world and you've done everything from musical theatre to the pop charts. Is the diversity the reason that you're still here? I would probably have to say yes. I would have to say that diversifying is what's kept me stimulated and interested. Mm. I couldn't. I couldn't possibly just make records it would not satisfy me enough I couldn't make records if I knew that I couldn't go and play live because if I couldn't go and play live I probably wouldn't even bother making records I'd stop that immediately it's interesting I have great respect for theatre people because I think anybody who has the discipline to do the same thing eight times a week and can do the same performance on Monday as they do on a Saturday seven shows Mm -hmm. later has to be Mm -hmm. a genius and that's really where you got your training isn't it that you can't phone it in you've got to give a performance every time yeah, and regardless of what the circumstances are, where your head's at, it's that's what it's all about. But, you know, Alex, I grew up in the 1970s on national television Australia. I mean, I, I learnt my craft in a very, very organic way. And that, that kind of journey and those apprenticeships absolutely do not exist today. So I am one of the privileged ones. I'm the last of that generation. It's done. It's finished. After me, it's finished. There's nobody else. It is depressing. And I'll tell you what's also sad for me. I get an inbox every day of new CDs and new artists, and they're all doing covers. You've put an album together of brand new stuff. Is that brave and brilliant or slightly commercially suicidal? Listen, one, I tell you, For me, suicide has always been somebody who follows trends. That, to me, equates equals to suicide. 2007 was the year that I approached EMI in Australia. John O'Donnell, who runs EMI in Australia, I said, John, here I presented him with... with, um, I'd sent him an email because we're on email then, of course. I had written, I had sat down as I do. I grab a book. I'm very old fashioned. I still write in books. Alex, it's the way I like it. And that ain't even, that ain't ever going to change. I came up with a track listing of 10 songs in about 15 minutes in between my son sleeping upstairs and me trying to cook lunch. And I remember sitting down in 2007 when everybody, when I was struggling to put material together. The material, the original material was coming together rather nicely. We started shopping it out and the response was so diabolical that I just went, holy ghost, what am I going to do here? That kind of negative response that I had received, to me, I could only interpret as fear. I went, okay, here we are. People are fearing things now. They're not ready for this. So I instantly felt that things were shifting and I went, ooh, we're just about to enter a very dark period. What happens in darkness with with popular culture? In darkness, people, popular culture reverts back to security, to safety, to something that they know. Boom, I sat down, I made a list of songs. 2007 this was. And I approached the record company and said, can I please have X amount of dollars because this is a record I want to produce? They kind of looked at me and went, you want to do an orchestral record of covers? And I went, yes, I do. And the guy looked at me and went, okay, okay, fine. 
Here it is, Very Brave Man. Sat there, did that record. That record came out. It had songs uh, like Man with a Child in His Eyes, Lulu's To Sir With Love, um, The Moody Blues, Nights in White Satin, all these fabulous songs that I went and interpreted the way that I felt. I wanted to hear them. That song came out, that record came out and was a phenomenal success in Australia. I then was approached by a producer who was ready to take the risk to go, okay, Tina, let's tour and do these orchestral tours. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, even up until 2012, year after year of touring this Songs of Love and Loss in an orchestral fashion. A year and a bit after the first one came out, I released the second one, Songs of Love and Loss, Volume 2. Another bunch of songs, perhaps not as obscure as the first one, a little more commercial, but still very, very interesting. Those records were fantastic. Those records were way before their time, and people really enjoyed listening to those songs that were snapshots of their childhood, as well as mine, and and, her, and hearing them arranged with my interpretation. It was a fantastic experience. It was a journey that probably changed my performance. The years of theatre came into play, the years of television came into play, and here I was in front of 60, 70, 80 piece, totally at ease, and having a wonderful time and doing my job. And you can hear the actress in you, even in this new album. You tell a story with your songs, don't you? You sort of act them out, and I think that's what makes them so playful and interesting. Well, you know, there's a sense of banality. I think one of the things that I find really disappointing as a listener, I can't, I'm not speaking even as an artist at, at now, I'm speaking as somebody who listens. I have had a great deal of problem listening to things on radio and so forth because I just don't hear any emotional connection. I hear a lot of emulation. I hear people trying to outdo each other technically and vocally. You know, people trying to be more outrageous than the other and quite frankly, it's really boring. But how do you describe that to a young generation who are in the middle of discovering themselves and are educated to be bombastic and to be a little bit silly and to not leave anything to the imagination. You know, they listen to me, they listen to me and they go, well, you're a bit of an old fart. And it's like, well, no, I'm not really. I'm just trying to make you understand that <laughs> that's not that's not what it's all about. But again, my journey is my journey because of what I've lived. Yep. You have to allow people to live their journeys the way that they f see fit. But let's face it, Tina, we've never lived in a more cynical time musically where you can have a judge on X Factor who performs live on the show and lip syncs. I mean, it doesn't make sense, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Absolutely. And I can't argue with you there. And I'm not going to argue with you there. But hey, you know, that's the way life has become, you know. So yeah. at the end of the day, I'm not interested in buying into that. I'm just interested in doing what it is that I do. If it inspires people, fantastic. If it doesn't and they switch and zap, well, zap. Knock yourself out. Good for you. Don't blame you. When you sing a song like Bring Me Love on this new album, how much does it take out of you? Because it is personal and it is touching raw nerves, isn't it? That's my job. My job is to touch raw nerves. It's something that I've been doing unconsciously ever since I opened my mouth nearly 40 years ago when I started singing. So... You know, it's just what it is for me. And I know is that because I'm an Italian girl and at the end of the day, you know what the Italians are like. They're bloody dramatic. It's all about passion. It's all about, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know what it is. I just, I just enjoy exchange. You're so great at doing that way of coming across so beautifully. Um, what does it feel like in the morning when you wake up and you feel raspy or a cold's coming on and you've got a show? Is that terrifying? Yeah, of course it's terrifying. Absolutely, it's terrifying. You've got to understand that the throat is guided completely by the emotions. And then, of course, it's also the kind of athlete that you are because being a, a singer requires you to be an athlete 
Although people, that's something that I actually didn't realise till the doctor a few years ago said to me, Tina, do you actually realise the kind of physical energy that you exert singing for two hours? And I kind of looked at him and scratched my head and went, no. He went, well, it's actually, it's the equivalent of you perhaps running a marathon for an hour and a half. And I went, oh my God, I didn't quite realise that. Well, and that's why you're so thin and gorgeous, isn't it? Because you are an athlete in your own way. Well, I guess I am an athlete in my own way, and I'm not a gym junkie. I never have been. You know, I um, I eat like a horse. Um, I try and get out as much as I can, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm not a. I don't follow trends. I trust I trust my instincts. I eat well. It's important to eat well. I cook, and I'm a and I'm a bon vivant, as as the French would say. I'm a I'm a, I'm a woman who likes to live. I try not to buy into the bull dust that's around, and I try and live my life as simplistically as. As I can and enjoy the moments that I'm here because I've realised very quickly, I uh, realised a long time ago that we're here for a, we're here for a good time, but we certainly are not here for a long time. And I think that's why you're so credible. As is this new album reset. We've only got a couple of minutes left, and I could talk to you for another half an hour. Just very finally on the international success, is that affirmation great that in Switzerland and Germany and in New Zealand and Canada and Britain and America you've hit the charts? Do the awards mean anything in these countries or is it all about the music? It's all about the music for me, you know, I, I and I mean that really quite sincerely. It's, it's of absolutely no disrespect to the decorations, whatever they may be, because it is a sign of respect and appreciation for somebody who's honed their craft. That I absolutely respect. I'm not driven by it, though. I never have been driven by it. You know, I'm driven by a passion and a, and an absolute understanding of the reason why I'm on this planet and I chose the vocation that I chose or perhaps it chose me, I don't know, one or the other. But I'm privileged. I'm a person that is very lucky to be doing something that they love. And that's what I, and that's all I'm interested in celebrating. And hopefully it can inspire and make somebody else's day a happier day when they listen to a song. It's pretty simple. I call it musical therapy. You call it whatever you want to you want to call it. I hope you realize how talented you are. This new album is stunning. It's called Reset. It is a proper album by a true artist that has put her heart and soul into it. Go and get it now. Reset is the new album by Tina Arena. Can we see you live in the in the next few months or years? Come on, we need you back on tour. <laughs> I'm actually playing St. John's in Hackney this Thursday night in London. It's my first show in London in a decade and I'm so excited. I can't believe that I'm playing in one of my favourite inspirational cities after such a long time. Well, we love you here. And for me, a radio guy that's played Chains on the Air a million times, it's a go-to record. Whenever the show's a flop, that brings it back up. And I hope you know what you've done to music. Tina Arena, his new album is called Reset. It's out now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Alex, to you and all your listeners. Have a great, great time and thanks for your support. Thanks so much.